Hey guys, it's Austin here with Out Jeeping, and in today's video, I'm going to be showing you guys how to replace a unit bearing on this Jeep Cherokee. Now, I'm going to be doing this on my 99 Jeep Cherokee, and the uh, unit bearing is also referred to as, you know, a front wheel bearing or hub assembly. There's a lot of names that get thrown around with it, but I believe the correct term is unit bearing. So, I'm just going to dive into it right away. I'm going to be doing the passenger side right here because I noticed there's a little bit of a noise when you're going down the road. And I'll show you the entire process of taking it all apart and putting it all back together with the new part in there. So let's get started. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is lift the vehicle off the ground so that the tire is off on this side so we can work on it. If you don't have an impact driver, you might wanna break your lug nuts free while it's still on the ground. That way it should be a lot easier. But I'm gonna go and take my jack and lift up on the front axle. And once that's up in the air, I'll put a couple jack stands underneath the frame um, for safety purposes. So one way you could also tell that your unit bearing is bad is if you have it jacked up off the ground like this is, you can actually take the whole entire wheel and shake it you know, back and forth um, and you can actually feel the play that's in there in the unit bearing. So this tells me that's bad. Um, the play could also come from the ball joints if you do have bad ball joints, but I have replaced this um, about a year ago. So I wouldn't suspect those being bad yet. And this does make noise going down the road. Um, when you turn a certain direction, it goes away and then when you turn the other direction it starts making noise again. That basically indicates that um, there's more pressure going on that bearing as you're turning and it's grinding and bearing's basically shot so it needs to get replaced. So the next thing I'm gonna do is remove this wheel. Um, these factory lug nuts are a 19 millimeter or if you have different ones, they're probably three quarter. Then we're just going to slide this under the vehicle in case it does fall. All right, so the next thing we have to do is remove our brakes. And to do that, these calipers right here, if you have uh, factory bolts in there, they're going to be a 13 millimeter. And they're directly in the back side, so we're going to pull both of those off. Then we should be able to remove our rotor, and that should pop off here. And then the next thing we got to do is remove our axle nut which has this cotter pin holding it in place, and then take a uh, 36 millimeter socket on here, I believe, and we should be able to knock that off. But first things first, we're gonna get this caliper off. All right, so with those two bolts off, we can take our caliper off. The top is just basically gonna slide back. And then the bottom, you just pull straight up and then it pops out like so. And now I'm gonna go and set this on top of the lower control arm, that way it's not hanging from the brake line. And if you've done your brakes recently or you have some antices, this should come off nicely. I've done these brakes not too long ago. All right, so we can see our unit bearing right here and it's held in by the axle nut that's right on the front side and then we got three bolts on the back side which are gonna be a 13 millimeter 12 point um, sockets to get those off. And to be able to do that, you might want to have your ignition in the run position. That way you should be able to move the tire back and forth um, to be able to get these bolts off. But I'm going to start off with the axle nut up here. We just have a cotter pin. You got to straighten out and then push it through the hole. This one's kind of destroyed. Um, so I'm just going to pull it off like that. Then we got our little cap and then a little spring washer like that, you don't want to lose that. All right, so now I'm going to take this uh, 36 millimeter nut off um, with my impact. If you don't have an impact, you can put the Jeep in four wheel drive with the driver's side or opposite side tire um, on the ground, and that way this should be able to be locked up and you can take a breaker bar and break it free. So once you get the nut off, you also have a washer on here might be kind of stuck on there, but I think I'll get that off when the unit bearing pulls out. 
All right, so I went and took the steering wheel and turned it all the way to the left. Um, that way I should get better access to these bolts on the back side. And to start off, I'm just gonna use a half inch breaker bar with my 12 point socket and put it on these bolts. Now once this is free with our breaker bar, I'm gonna transfer over to my half inch ratchet and finish it off. And that's what one of the bolts looks like. You can tell I've been in here already. Um, I think I replaced this with a used one before and it finally went bad, but I did put anti-seize in here. That definitely helps in the long run because these come right out and this Jeep has 302,000 miles on it. So uh, proper maintenance is key. All right, to get that last bolt out, I'm gonna go and turn the wheel all the way to the right. All right, so now the last thing we gotta do is basically break this bond between the knuckle and the unit bearing. Um, there are a few ways of doing this. Um, if you obviously have a bad wheel bearing, you can go to town and uh, pound on this flange, but if you wanna happen to keep the bearing, um, this wouldn't be the ideal way to do it because you would end up uh, possibly destroying the bearing that's inside by hammering on this outside flange. A technique that I like to do um, that seems to be working well for the past few years on doing this type of stuff is actually to take um, an extra bolt, if you have one lying around, find one that has the same thread pitch and use this to hammer, um, basically thread in and hammer on the head. And that way it's only hammering on this back surface right here and it should crack it free. Um, I dedicated this bolt, um, so obviously you can't uh, use the ones that are for it because otherwise it's gonna mushroom out the head and it's gonna be useless. Um, but you should be able to thread this in by hand, um, do at least uh, four or five turns to get enough thread contact. That way you don't destroy the threads that are in here and you should be able to pull out the bolt uh, with your hand. So I'm gonna thread this in on the back side Take a nice hammer and give it a couple whacks. And I can already see a gap forming, so I'm gonna go and move to the other holes and do the same thing. All right, it's almost out. There we go. I want to be very careful that you uh, leave your axle shaft with it. It should pull off like that. Don't forget your washer. Sometimes it gets stuck in there. I'm push that axle shaft back in. Now you are going to have a brake dust shield that goes between the unit bearing and the knuckle here. Um, since this Jeep uh, has some rust issues, those have long gone and I removed them a long time ago. Um, so I don't have to worry about that. But you want to make sure when you put it all back together that you orientate it right. Otherwise the rotor could um, contact that dust shield um, if you put it on backwards and you wouldn't want that because it'll be making lots of noise. Okay, so before I put the new unit bearing on, I want to go and uh, actually clean up the surface that it mates onto the knuckle. Um, take a file or a wire brush, get any uh, rust grime out of there. And I'm actually going to put a thin coat of anti-seize in there. And that's going to help with... Uh, preventative maintenance in the future. If I had to replace this again, it'll be nice and smooth like how it was today. All right, so the new unit bearing I have today is uh, a Moog one. Um, normally I would like to actually replace this with a high quality one, um, Timken. I did that on my other Jeep and they still are working fine, but this is a Sunday and the job has to get done today. So, so I just got it at the auto parts store for overpriced um, as usual, so. All right, so now when reinstalling this, if you have your dust shield, you're gonna to wanna to orientate that correctly and put it on first. And then you can take your unit bearing and slide it onto the axle shaft and orientate the holes to match onto the knuckle. And then once again, we're gonna feed our bolts in and I'm also gonna use some anti-seize on these threads. And then feed them in from the back side. And then while this is still kind of loose, you wanna thread it in and then actually use the bolts to help draw it close to the knuckle for a nice press fit. Now I'll use my ratchet and draw these in. All 
All right, so unfortunately I wasn't recording on that last part, but I went and torqued down those three bolts to 75 pound-feet of torque, and now I'm gonna do the axle nut right here, and I have my washer on there already, so I'm just gonna stick my nut on here, and zip that on real quick with my impact. And now this axle nut calls for 175 foot-pounds. I went and put the Jeep in four-wheel drives um, with the opposite side front tire on the ground. That way they shouldn't be able to move. It's very important to uh, make sure this is torqued down properly. If it's not properly torqued, um, that could lead to premature wear in these bearings and you might have uh, to replace these more often if you don't torque it properly. And to finish this off, we have our spring washer and then we have our little cover. And then we want to get our cotter pin and put it into place. Okay, so now we can just put our brakes back together once we have that axle nut back on there. This uh, cotter pin's a little bit uh, broken, but still managed to get that to work. Um, I also like to put some anti-seize on this hub surface right here to prevent the rotor from uh, seizing on there. And also just for the uh, pads maintenance, um, when they slide here on the knuckle surfaces, I also like to put a little bit of anti-seize on there. That way they're moving fine and your brakes aren't wearing in weird patterns. So I'm gonna go and do that real quick. All right, so now I'm gonna take my rotor Slide it back on. Then we're going to take our caliper. Guide pins are still moving nice and freely, so that's all ready to go. If these are happen to be uh, stuck, you might want to fix that right now while you're all at it. But I'm just going to throw this back on. The bottom grooves go into the bottom part of the knuckle and then you want to push it forward just like that. And then take your caliper bolts and feed them into the holes on the back side. And then we can tighten these up. Okay, so now the last thing we got to do is just put on the wheel. drop it on the ground so I'm going to pull out my jack stand and then lower the jack. Now depending on if you have steel or aluminum wheels it'll vary on the torque spec. I'm going to go and torque these guys down to 100 foot pounds. Alright and that's all there is to it. Alright guys, that's going to be it for today's video. As you saw, things went pretty smoothly for me. Um, having preventative maintenance is pretty much key to uh, help you in the future to help uh, make those jobs go a lot smoother. My helpful tip is uh, to use anti-seize on those mating surfaces. That definitely helps on getting those parts off. That way you're not sitting there for hours with penetrating oil and a hammer beating away at it. So if you found this video helpful, uh, make sure to like and subscribe to the OutGP YouTube channel to help keep these kind of videos going. And if you have any more questions or comments, make sure to post them below and I'll be happy to answer them. Until next time, I'll see you guys in the next video.